I'm Jeff Philbin. This is the show where we take ideas for dinner and turn them into dinner dias. Today, we have pork for your fork as we make the perfect crispy fried pork chops with a side of parsnip fries and creamy garlic spinach. Chop, chop, let's go, people. With his top of the shop chop is my friend Chef Ted Dorsey. He's just opened a brand new restaurant called Sonata at St. Pete's Mahaffey Theater. It is so great to have you here inside the Dinner Dia's Kitchen. I'm Thank you. For this. Thanks for having me. So before we get even into the main event with our pork chops, we got some sides that we need to start up on first, which are these parsnip fries. Correct, yes. So for people who have never tried a parsnip, they're just not a pale carrot, right? No, they're not. They're, 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 they are a root veg. They are very earthy. Um, not as earthy as some other vegetables. Um, That's the main like comparison, though. People think that it's just going to taste just like a carrot, though. It's, it's not, and just because it looks the same. It looks it, but it's not the same thing. No, no. Um, for me, I think you get sweet, kind of mild uh, almond undertones, mm -hmm. um, which really, you know, lends itself well to different dif different dishes. Um, this is just my favorite kid-friendly dish. I love it because you're a family man. I am. Okay, I've got a seven-year-old. You've got a seven-year-old. Plus, Correct. you've got a ten-year-old right yes. now too, and and. You know, he's into sports right now, so time is of the essence. Yes. Where it's just like, how are you going to be able to fit everything in? you got the brand new restaurant. You've got the kids that are doing their activities, but dinner's still got to be an important part of the, the day. It is. It is. So, you know, really for us, being able to, to create a, a from-scratch homemade meal in less than 30 minutes is something that's very vital to, to my wife and I because, you know, on nights like last night, for instance, you know, between Taekwondo and dance and everything else and then homework, I mean, we didn't even start dinner until 8 o'clock. I hate to admit that, but that's the reality. But and and the reality so to be able sometimes. to do something fast, it, it really helps us. And it's still healthy and it's from scratch, so it's not a bunch of processed stuff. Totally. And all that fun and, stuff. And you still can be able to respect the ingredients. And the great thing is that because there are so many great uh, tools now to help complement the cold cooking process starting something that might be at eight o'clock at night because that's just the nature of you know what happens with the day sometimes still wanted to get a great deal meal there's tools like an air fryer to help like an air fryer which is great so we use our air fryer all the time and this is a dish that i cook for my kids frequently um you know the the parsnips make great french fries they cook fairly quickly in the yeah. air fryer and the fact that what the, you know at the end of the day what the air fryer does is is it evenly circulates the hot temperature mm -hmm. throughout. It's very much like a pressure fryer. Um, so in a, in, in a kitchen, you know, we have deep fryers and then the pressure fryer, which is what we use for fried chicken, um, it circulates the hot oil evenly over the product. So the same concept with the air fryer. So it cooks nice and even and we like that. And, and folks, I mean, this is something that maybe you should, if you haven't already put together the Christmas list, it might need to be on there because these are very inexpensive tools to have inside the home kitchen. They really are. I mean, they're not, not expensive at all these days. They're just not for chicken nuggets, folks. You can be able to expand your horizon because for Chef Ted's recipes for his air fryer parsnip fries, they are on our website, dinnerdias.com, along with everything he's going to be making today, including his crispy fried pork chops. And there's even a video of this show you can watch again if you need a reminder of how we made it. The easiest way to find us on the World Wide Web, grab your phone, open up the camera app, point at the QR code in the corner of the screen, see if you can point your camera faster than I point at it because I always have trouble with looking at it from the other side of it, but it's right there, it was right there. See, even then, I still don't mess it up there, but you didn't mess it up because when you have that QR code in your sites, a link to our site pops up and you can press to it to get right to us. And look, I just turned around, the parsnip fries are already very ready to go, so very simple. So we just want to cut them what we call batonne, but basically french fry cut. Mm -hmm. A little bit of grapeseed oil. Uh, I, I like grapeseed oil because it has the highest flash point for cooking. Yeah. Um, also doesn't have any of the, the, the bad stuff in it. Sure. Um, so we just lightly salt, uh, pepper, let the oil, and we really just want to let that product speak for itself. You know, you can add other spices and herbs if you'd like. Yeah. Um, you know, you can even, after you fry them, depending on the dish you want to use them in, you can, you know, toss them in honey or, or maple syrup yeah. or different things. Um, 
But for this dish, we're gonna get our sweetness from a different avenue. So we're just gonna go ahead and get this turned on. Um, I like air fry at 360. Um, I usually let it go for 15 minutes and check them, but you really just want golden brown, what we call golden brown delicious. Golden brown delicious, I love it. They're already in the air fryer. So that also allows us the opportunity because like I'm a big fan, you got porks, it's like almost like the natural progression. Pork chop, you gotta have an applesauce. And kids, family, I mean, that's the only way you're gonna be able to have the kids eat the actual pork chop. Exactly. Is with an applesauce. So walk us through what we gotta do next. So next we're gonna jump over here and we are going to dice our apple. Okay. Um, so basically I like leaving the skin on. The skin is where all the nutrients are. Um, one apple, uh, if you and ask- what type of apple for this? Uh, you know, you can really use anything. I like the honey crisp, mm -hmm. um, but a Granny Smith works really well. Even a Red Delicious works. Okay. Um, so it's really just kind of your personal preference at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but one apple is more than enough um, to feed a family of four and have some leftovers, especially if you ask my wife. So I, uh, you can never have enough applesauce. I mean, I think we always have applesauce in the house at all times, and even as much as Holden is now seven. I'm still going for the applesauce Dude. myself sometimes. Like it's, I'm still going for like, I, I just I love applesauce. That's that's the best part about being a parent with the kids that are our kids age is, is we get to kind of relive our childhood uh, to a degree and, and through experiences and also through foods. Absolutely, um, it's that level of approachability. Like, hey, if mom and dad can eat this, you know, I can eat this too. I should be trying this and oh wow, this is actually very good. It's the level of exposure that it's not just out of the can, it's not just out of the jar, but hey look, there's a beautiful way that you can be able to enjoy great ingredients that come together in a great dish. Just try it, just try it kids. Exactly, you can do it quick and you can do it for a reasonable price. And that at the end of the day is what we're looking for as parents so that we can have a good healthy meal for our kids. I love it and, and it's all going skin on. So you got all those nutrients that you're talking about and it's still gonna have delicious factors so it's not even gonna be polarizing for a kid. Because once they get the taste it's gonna be absolutely like Primo. Exactly. All right, so what else are we gonna be putting inside uh, our, our pan here? So right now we got our apples in here. Mm -hmm. What I like to add next is a little bit of, a, I prefer a nice apple cider. Okay. Um, but uh, apple juice will be fine, okay. uh, any of that. Um, I put a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Okay. Um, you know, acids, as you know, yep. as a chef, balance everything. Um, and then brown sugar. And then we're just gonna let this cook down, basically stew and start to make a marmalade. We're really gonna bring it to all sec. Okay. Coat the back of a spoon um, and it's ready to go. By then the apples will be tender, we'll be cooking pork. How long does that normally take then? Eh, 15 minutes or so, give or take. Sounds like a plan because we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, eat your veggies, but make it delicious because Chef Ted has a super spinach suggestion for you ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz. Ideas for dinner made fresh for you each day. And today we're making the perfect pork chops. Thanks to my friend, Chef Ted Dorsey. Before the break, we started on our side of air fryer, fried uh, parsnip fries and our apple compote that we're just kind of letting simmer away right now. But to have those ready for when we cook the pork chops, we need to have a little bit more fun here because you know, if we're here cooking for the family, the kids gotta have some of the vegetables here. They do. So how do we take a simple bag of spinach and transform it into something that everyone's gonna absolutely love. So what I like to do for the kids is, is kind of mask some of those flavors of the spinach. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get our oil That's in. That's spoken by a true father at that stage of the game <laughs> for the kids. We're gonna mask the flavor of the spinach with other flavors that are gonna take you away from spinach, but make it delicious. Yes, exactly. So we're gonna get our All onion right. in there, a little bit of garlic, a okay. little bit of shallot for bite. Nice. And we're just gonna let that sweat for a minute. Oh, and these smells are already just going on. And wanna have everybody come into the kitchen. Oh, look at that. See, and that's the thing. This is the base for a beautiful adult friendly dish. And then, you know, like, so you're hiding the spinach from the kids, but you're also like being like, hey, mom and dad, uh, let's jazz this part up. Exactly. That's a win, win, win in my book, my friend. Spinach. Kind of slowly added. It always goes everywhere. Yeah. My daughter loves helping me with this stuff. I just did the same thing this past week, and it was like spinach, just layer, 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 yeah. layer, cook down, cook down. 
add more. Yep, that's it. Just, you know, let it wilt and then add more. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's that's the beauty of cooking, you know, is is you can add, you know, that's probably why I, I enjoy cooking more than baking, is, uh, you know, it's less of a science. You can kind of add and change things as you go. And what you have is what you want to put in. What you're tasting in that moment might change from what you did the last time or the next time you did it, exactly. but you're just enjoying everything. That's like the way I got into cooking. Exactly, you know. Um, so, you know, just let the, the, the flavors kind of speak for themselves, you know, the beautiful onions, sweet Vidalia onion, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. It's already a beautiful base because to spiff up your spinach into Chef Ted's creamy garlic spinach, get his recipe for that and everything he's making today at our website, dinnerdias.com. Just open up your camera on the phone, point right at the QR code there in the corner of your screen, and a link will pop up to take you right to our site. And look at that spinach come together. You want me to go ahead and add a little more? Yeah, please? go for All it. Right. Throw go, it in. Let's go ahead. Drop it in here. So, you know, the trick is just keep it moving. Mm-hmm. You know. And then we'll let this wilt for a minute. We'll add our cream. Okay. And I'll, yeah. like, and I'll throw in this last little bit. Might as well finish here. it. Yeah, you know what? We'll go all in for it there. Because I want to know a little bit more about the restaurant. So tell us a little bit about Sonata. So, you know, Sonata is a really, really cool restaurant. So we're located inside the Mahaffey Theater. Okay. Um, never housed a restaurant before. Beautiful space, gorgeous restaurant space. Two stories, multiple bars. We have the beautiful atrium. We overlook Tampa Bay. We've got and the marina and Albert Witted Airport and the Dolly, everything's right there. And that's not just a reflection of the moon in the window. This is actually a replica of the moon like in all of the craters, all of the indentations, like this is a real life model of the actual moon. It is, so this is on loan to us from an artist. Um, it's from Imagine Museum. Uh, it was donated by Trish Duggan. Um, and uh, it is, it is an exact replica of the moon. It's six meters in diameter. What? Um, it's suspended in our atrium and our dining room. So you'll be able to come down and eat and dine by the moon. Oh, I love it. All right, so you just added some heavy cream. Just added some heavy cream. We're gonna go ahead and get that in there. Okay, I wanna check on these parsnips here. How are they coming along? Perfect, give them a toss. Very nice, very nice. Let's go for a nice shake. Let them go back in a few more minutes and they'll okay. be ready to rock and roll. Nice. So just a little heavy cream there and you're just gonna let that reduce for a little bit to just, thicken? Just reduce it a little bit to thicken. Okay. Um, then we're gonna go ahead, while that's reducing, we're gonna go ahead and knock in some cream cheese. You know, okay. this is that part where we mask the flavor for the kids. Okay. Um, Realistically, and the adults sometimes too. And the adults, you know, it makes it a little sweeter, okay. um, which makes it more, you know, appeasing. Um, you know, spinach can be very bitter, um, but with the cream and the garlic and then the cream cheese, it, it really makes it delicious and it really layers those flavors well. Absolutely. And what's nice too is that not only can you do this for the side, but it sounds like this can be a base for a beautiful spinach dip too. If you wanted to just kind of like say, hey, here's a foundational element that like, hey, you know, we got dinner during the week, but maybe we got game day over Absolutely. on the weekend. Absolutely. Like this, this is this. Some artichokes, some Come crab. Uh, dude, and then just like some beautiful crostinis. Yes. You coming to my house or am I coming to your house? I'll be at your house. Come on now, Brett, Brett. <laughs> let's do it, man. Let's do this then. All right, so we've got some of the, uh, the we've got our cream cheese in here. That's going to just so kind of melt a little bit. Next, I and like then. to use just a little bit of fresh squeezed lemon juice. You can okay. cut it. I just squeezed a little bit ahead of time. Okay. Um, just to brighten it up. Just to brighten it up, you know, the acid really, really draws out the natural flavor of all the aromatics that we okay. put in, the garlic and the shallot and the onions. Um, and then it also kind of tones down the bitterness from the spinach. I absolutely love it. Well, a little bit of salt and pepper, and then we're just gonna reduce this a little bit more and it's ready to go. Fantastic. Well, our splendid sides are looking good, which means we'll be your one-stop shop for perfect pork chops when we come back after the break and show you how to get them crispy ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz. You've got hunger, we've got ideas for dinner. How lucky that we ran into one another, my friends, because with us today is my friend, Chef Ted Dorsey. He's taken time out of opening the brand new restaurant, Sonata Restaurant and Lounge in the Mahaffey Theater on the waterfront in St. Pete to bring us the perfect pork chop with air fryer parsnip fries, creamy garlic spinach, and an apple compote. My friends, 
before we even got our sides all sorted before the break. This was what the joy of food is all bringing us together for because now it's the main event time. It's our crispy fried pork chops. So let's start at the beginning of this. Getting this right, how do we shop for the right pork chops? Well, I think it starts with what your thought process is for your dish. Do you want uh, bone in, bone out? Um, you know, where do you want the fat in the cut? Mm -hmm. um, so for this particular dish, I like a rib chop. Yep. Um, I like leaving a little bone in. You get that beautiful fat cap on there. Mm -hmm. um, basically the spinellus of the ribeye uh, of the pork. And uh, that's probably my favorite pork cut. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Publix offers some great varieties of pork, uh, as do as does Winn-Dixie and, yeah. and all of the, their local. Uh, easily accessible, easily affordable. Is. It's And it's easy to cook. You know, this particular recipe, you know, it, it, you cook them about two minutes aside, you know, they cook fairly quickly. Perfect. Um, you know, it's easy to do at home. Um, you just want to give them a nice little breading. Okay. Now, do you flour. do anything with the flour? Do you season your flour? I do season my flour. So okay, we, so that's a pro tip, folks. We, season your flour. What are you seasoning it with? Um, so in this particular breading, um, I do uh, chili powder, um, garlic powder, onion powder, mustard powder. Uh, a little bit of cayenne, salt, and black pepper. Okay. Um, so basically, you're just going to go ahead and three-stage bread these. Um, you want to get them in that bread crumb, make sure they're nice and coated really well. Um, give them a little flip and get them down into that pan. I mean, we want to go your pan, um, three-quarter heat. What I like to, to teach my kids, because like, you know, they're both learning how to cook now, uh, you know, uh, like a seven on your range. Okay, okay. Um, you know, give those a nice breading. They cook pretty quick, like I said, about two minutes a side. So, you know, you're four minutes and these bad boys are cooked through and they're beautiful every time. See, and that's what I love and expect from, you know, the restaurants that you've been at and with this new one, Sonata. Is, are pork chops on the menu? I do, I have a bone-in tomahawk pork chop. Um, okay. And it is amazing. It's a, a Berkshire pork and, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we have some really cool fun dishes on our menu. So um, what is this then? Because this looks fun. So that is our pork belly burnt ends. Um, it's delicious. It's paired with a jicama pineapple jalapeno slaw. Um, and just amazing with a little spicy aioli for dipping. Um, next level. That one is, is one of my favorites. That's our blackened day boat fish. Uh, we're working with a local fishmonger out of Madeira Beach. He's running 32 long line fishing boats every week. Um, so we're bringing in not only everybody's favorite grouper snapper, but some of my favorites, some of the off catch, the bycatch, your wreck fish and your golden tile, the, the lesser known species of, of the Gulf that are still really delicious and amazing for people to, to try. Absolutely, and I wanna try this one here because what are we looking at here? That is one of my favorite dishes. Um, that is a uh, chorizo stuffed calamari. Okay. Uh, it's paired with a smoked tomato cream and a yuzu coolie. Um, next level, I mean, the, the flavors in that dish will blow your mind. Um, the secret to uh, perfect calamari, in my opinion, is, is uh, giving it a cure long enough to extract all the liquid from the calamari so okay. that you get a nice, beautiful calamari without it being chewy and rubbery. I love it because you've, literally, that's the perfect calamari. Folks, you have seen how to make the most perfect pork shop though and even told you how to shop for them. All you need now is the recipe with all the ingredients and the directions. And good news, my friends, we have it ready for you at our website where you can follow along, print it for later, dinnerdias.com. Just scan the QR code to head right there. And look, we just hit the flip on our pork chops. Pork chops just got flipped. We're gonna give them about another minute. We're gonna pull them off. We're gonna put them on our, uh, our underliner covered with a paper towel and we'll season them. The paper towel will pull out all the excess grease. Um, and then we'll be ready to plate. Fantastic. So as you can see, these sure look like the perfect pork chops, but how do they taste? Only one way to find out. I'm digging in for you, my friends, for you. And when we come back here on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz. If you're just joining us today, we've been making the perfect pork chop. Thanks to my friend, Chef Ted Dorsey from the new restaurant, Sonata. Sonata Restaurant and Lounge, actually, at St. Pete's Mahaffey Theater. We also made air-fried parsnip fries. 
creamy garlic spinach, and an apple compote, all from scratch, and all in less than 30 minutes, my friends. Come on now. This is the best part of the day. Yep. We gotta taste it now. Which way are you going first? Are you going pork chop? Going straight pork chop. That's the way you can do it. That's that's you, you gotta go all in for that. And I wanna make sure I get more of these apples here too, because you know that's like the that's like the perfect harmony right there. Mm. I already heard the mmm from you before I can even get an mmm. What are you tasting? You know, one of my favorite things about being a chef is, is layering of flavors and balancing the sweet, the salty, the crunchy. You get the texture, you get the creamy from the spinach, you get the earthy bite from the parsnips. It's really a, a complete dish in one. And, you know, I think, I'd like to think that home chefs, I know I do at home, um, kind of approach meals just like we do as, as culinary professionals in the same light that we want a balanced meal. We want to have all those beautiful flavors married in one. And to be able to do it in a quick time frame and turn around a healthy meal for your kids is A plus for me. And this is an absolute A plus of a dish because thank you so much again to Chef Ted Dorsey for a meal by the light of that giant moon. Pay him a visit at Sonata Restaurant and Lounge at the Mahaffey in St. Pete. Details are on our website along with all of his recipes from today's show. DinnerDias.com is your destination. That QR code is in the corner of the screen here, it's that sneaky little shortcut that is, I'm still messing that part up, I, I, I can't do it. But while you're there, let us know what you've cooked and how it turned out. And if you're on Instagram, hey, we are too. Follow us to see behind the scenes and be the first to know what we have coming up because we are at Dinner Diaz. I'm Jeff Philbin, thanks for watching. See you next time for more Dinner Diaz.